Some blockbuster news as the status of AEW streaming deal with Max may have just been leaked as it looks like AEW programming has started to populate and show up on the platform. Yes, yes, yes. AEW to Max confirmed. Kind of, question mark. We're going to talk about everything we know about this situation, how it's going to impact the ongoing, seemingly ongoing, I should say, media rights deal that AEW is negotiating with Warner Brothers Discovery and what it could look like and mean for the future of the company, both from the perspective of the fans and the business all that and much more coming up right here in this video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. So the big question of the summer has been, what is AEW's future going to be, both from the pay-per-view standpoint and on TV? Are they going to stay with Warner Brothers Discovery? Well, we just got a pretty big sign and indication that that seems to be the case. As international fans have began noticing, as you can see from the screenshot, and there's several of these going off online, there's reports going on, international fans are seeing AEW programming pop up on their Max feed. So if you're a subscriber to Max, you can see pages like this just show past AEW pay-per-views, current AEW programming like Dynamite, Collision, Rampage, and... It is the biggest indication that we've gotten of two things. Number one, that there is a streaming component to the deal that they are negotiating with Max and that AEW and its pay-per-view library, at least, will likely be going to Max, at least on an international standpoint. That's what this kind of leak, if you want to call it, confirms because, again, they have not made an announcement of it. They have not really talked about this. We haven't seen a press release or anything like that pop up. All we know is that if you're an international sub subscriber to Max, you're seeing this programming pop up. Fans cannot watch it yet. It says it's going to be available soon. So there is like, you know, a bit of a what's going on really here kind of uh, thinking about this. But this seems to me, if it, it, like we are this late in the game with this, this negotiation with Max, it's estimated, or I should say it's been reported that the window, the exclusivity window for AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery to negotiate is closing, and that is a big keyhole for AEW to try to get this negotiation done as well for Warner Brothers Discovery. But for this close to that window closing, and we are seeing progress like this, and we are seeing that, you know, there's this new component, this new streaming component, that is a sign to me at least that the negotiations are basically coming to an end. And it's been kind of, Tony Khan has said it, they're at the 10-yard line. There's a 20-yard line. They're in the red zone of these negotiations. And seems like that is the case. And, like, they're just about to announce something big. And as far as what that could be, I mean, it looks like at least, right, what the, 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 tape, the, the tape library or the video library, the video history of AEW is going to end up on Mac. So I'm talking past pay-per-views, past dynamites, past collisions, past rampages, going to Max. I don't think that necessarily means that Max is going to have the live streaming of AEW pay-per-views moving forward. You have a company like AEW that is still selling, you know, these pay-per-views for $50 a pop. The split with Max and, and other pay-per-view providers is like $25. The issue really with Max is and, and Warner Brothers in general is they don't have a proper pay-per-view uh, streaming avenue. Bleacher Report was bad. It's why AEW is now on Triller, and it's why AEW has you know on in, is on YouTube now as well for pay per view buys. Like you just cannot trust Bleacher Report, and and unfortunately Max right now does not have the infrastructure built out. But what they do have is a streaming partnership they're going to start within the next year with Hulu, with Disney, and ESPN that is going to consolidate a lot of their sports programmings into one sports streaming platform called Venue. And if AEW can take advantage and Warner Brothers can take advantage of that platform as that live streaming component, I could very well see a world where AEW pay-per-views end up on Venue while we see the weekly TV show maybe on Max. We see the weekly TV show maybe simulcasted across 
I, I think like those are things we could see, or we could see venue be the location. If you want to watch Dynamite, but you can't, uh, and you don't have cable, that's where you watch it. And I think, again, one of the biggest things about this is where does Dynamite, where did Collision, where did Rampage end up? Not just in like, where can you watch it? That's going to be an important question, but what nights do they end up? It is clear from every indication that we've gotten in the reporting around this that Dynamite is going to stay on Wednesday night. It's like, I don't think there's a question about that. But Rampage and Collision are completely separate matters. As far as we know, the indication is that AEW uh, will likely consolidate, or at least I believe they will likely consolidate Max, or sorry, Collision and Rampage into one three hour block. Or they're going to add Rampage to the uh, to a third hour of Dynamite. I think we are going to see one of those two shows go to three hours. I would argue that Max probably and Warner Brothers probably want uh, Dynamite to be that show. It is the highest rated show of the three. But I think it would probably be best if Collision were that show. And the reason is what part of what makes Dynamite and has made Dynamite very special is that it is two hours, it doesn't overstay its welcome, and it is so action-packed and must-watch in the moment that you can't afford to miss a second. When you elongate the programming, as we saw with Raw, you know, your numbers are going to take a bit of a dip, and the slow is going, the show is going to drag overall. And I think it's less of a problem if that happens to Collision, because it is, at this point, the less important show, but... The Dynamite is your flagship. I think you kind of want to treat that a little bit more special and make it must see. You know, I like you can have your overruns, you can have all of that, but I, I don't think a third hour of Dynamite is is what they need, at least from a fan's perspective. From a business standpoint, it probably is going to be very lucrative for them if they did decide to go that route. Uh, the other thing to take into account as far as like the moving pieces in, in the TV aspect is where is collision slash rampage where are they going to end up what night are we going to see them what time slot because one thing that we still haven't gotten full confirmation is on is in 2025 where does friday night smackdown go does smackdown or does smackdown stay on friday nights does it potentially move to thursday nights does it maybe go to Tuesday nights, back to Tuesday, and they switch around NXT? Like, what happens there, right? I think that's the, the 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 question. And in a world where Friday Night SmackDown moves, I think you will see Collision move to Friday nights. Uh, like, it, it, it would be the better of the two options. Saturday night is just, you know, unless, like, it's a, like, even if it's, like, a big, big event, it's just a bad night for television, Friday is like, you know, not as great, but there is an audience that is used to watching wrestling on Fridays. I think that you can get some of that. You can also get a lot of the people who are unable to watch on Saturdays to watch as well. So I think there could be some moving pieces depending on what happens with SmackDown. If SmackDown stays, then maybe there's a world where Collision moves to Thursdays and it's a double whammy for AEW because you're on a better night. And on top of that, you also are able to have talent in the city for both shows and instead of spreading it out over like a few days, consolidating costs, consolidating potentially an arena. Maybe you just have the same arena back to back nights and you'd run like a like, like a big super show. Like, like that is something we've seen them do when they've recorded collision in the past. They've done it back to back nights, same arena, and they just record it on that Thursday instead of uh, on that Saturday. So. There is, I think, value in doing that. Um, I would say move collision. <laughs> I think it works from a business standpoint and uh, so on. Uh, the big factor, obviously, is going to be what happens with the NBA. Uh, the NBA still has like one more season, I believe, on uh, on on TNT TBS, or sorry, on TNT. Excuse me. So there's they're going to have to wait until that deal is over. But <sighs> interesting times. Um, the last bit I want to touch on, though, before we wrap it up here is AEW and the potential for business. I think this is going to be, we know this TV deal is going to be big. Like it is 
this is critical for AEW. The streaming deal, the, the media rights deal. I, I keep calling it a TV deal, but it's a media rights deal. This is massive for the company because this is what the past five years have been building towards from a business standpoint. Like, it's not just selling out Wembley. It's not just having big arena shows or big... None of that. It is about making sure you secure the future of this company and make it profitable. And the model that Tony Khan built out from day one was a TV model. He understood that the money comes from media rights. It comes from the ability to create content that draws people and is attra and is, uh, attracts people. And I think he fully understood that back in 2019. And that's why we're seeing like AEW in the position that it's in. I, I think it's been, there's been a, like a lot, I know people like to drag on, on, on the business side of AEW. And again, I think a lot of this is from people who don't know anything about business or think they know, but they know the wrong things. Like CM Punk, for example, again, this is not a shot at CM Punk as a person, but like him saying that, you know, AEW is not a business. It's only going to be around as long as Tony Khan funds it. It really does. It really doesn't make sense when you consider the position they are in, in this media rights deal, because I think if they it, like, they are in a position to get a hundred million dollars plus per year in this media rights deal, and I think if they get like to that one hundred and forty million, one hundred fifty million dollar number, they are going to be more than profitable in the next five years. And we'll we'll obviously see what ends up happening if any news comes of this. Tony Khan has been alluding to this. He has been, you know, kind of uh, shooting a little bit about on online and and giving dropping hints about this kind of stuff potentially happening. So. We'll see if there's an official announcement. I don't expect one at the end of this week. Potentially, we could see an announcement set. Like, I think the way AEW typically does this kind of stuff is they will they will have, like, a graphic that shows up like, hey, we're promoting this. Tony Khan making an announcement live Wednesday night on Dynamite. I think that would be a great thing to do. Um, not this week for Blood and Guts, maybe, but, like, the following week, have that big attraction, that big announcement, and build some hype around it because, look, there's one thing that AEW does well. It's building hype around big moments, uh, especially as of recently. So we'll see what happens here, guys. Let me know in the comments section what you think is going to come of this streaming deal. What do you think about the fact that we're already seeing AEW programming pop up internationally on Mac? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's going to be more accessible? What match from AEW's history are you going to go back and watch if it does end up on Mac in the United States? I want to hear from y'all. Let me know in the comments. Also, be sure, if you haven't already done so, to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released.